health as. We say that health is a state of complete physical, mental, and emotional well-being, not just the absence of disease or infirmity. So we can see that when, to say that someone is healthy goes beyond, oh, I'm not having headache, I don't have malaria, I don't, I'm not hypertensive. There has to be a complete state of both physical, mental, and emotional well-being. And then we know that what a family is, usually it's a, it consists of maybe father, mother, children, other relatives, I mean, not even, and even some unrelated people, but it's just a group of people living together, sharing the same resources and the same goals. So, it's imp so we are looking at um, family health because we know that it's only a healthy family that is a wealthy family. And usually, for us as a family, our resources are limited. Meaning that we don't have, there are many things competing for our money, for our attention, such as food, maybe school fees, house rent and all that. So how do we now manage to use the resources we have to maintain the best health for our family? Usually we look at this health management in two approaches. Our first approach is the preventive approach, which is the best. We always say that prevention is better, better than cure. Not only is prevention better than cure, it is also a lot cheaper and safer than cure. So the bulk of what we'll be talking about this evening will be prevented, a preventive approach to managing our family's health. So this approach will deal with ways that we promote the health and well-being of our family members and also prevent diseases. When we talk about family members, it's important that everybody stays healthy. Fathers are working so hard. So it's important that they stay healthy, they stay alive to enjoy the fruits of their labor. The same thing with the mothers also. And then we are raising children so that they stay healthy, they stay alive to achieve their maximum potential. The second approach is the curative approach. It deals with the way that we will handle diseases when they have already occurred. So, but like I've said, prevention will be the more important thing that we'll be looking at because we say that prevention is a lot better than cure. So I've tried to break them, these approaches down into smaller points that we'll just briefly look at because of our time. The number one approach to preventive health for our families, to invest in our family's health. Invest in our family's health. I know that many of us tend to take our health for granted because God has given us good health, we are not really making any effort. But it shouldn't really be so. It should be something that we deliberately work on to make sure that our families stay healthy. So it means that as we are making a budget, monthly budget for, oh, I'll use this one for school fees, I'll use this one for rent, we also have to apportion a, a certain amount of money. This is for maintaining health. Eh, better still, preventive health, not to maybe start going to hospital when people are falling ill. So it has to be a deliberate effort. It has to be a conscious effort to invest in our family's health. It's unfortunate that the majority of us even tend to invest more or maybe take more care of our cars and our properties than our own health. It shouldn't really be so. So the first point is we should invest in our family's health. It's something I encourage each and every one of us to do this evening. The number two point is to, if you can get a health insurance cover, what do we mean by health insurance? For those, for those of us that work maybe with the government or the private sector, we may understand better. But health insurance should not be something that is limited to only government workers or people that work in companies. Even traders, even those that are self-employed should take advantage of that. Unfortunately, these things are available, but most times we don't know. For example, the National Health Insurance Scheme that covers civil servants is still available for even people that are not civil servants, even people that are maybe traders or self-employed. What health insurance simply means is that you contribute a small amount of money, maybe every month, certain amount every month, in the event of needing anything, whether preventive health or somebody has fallen ill, the health insurance pays for or covers for whatever treatment they The truth is that not many of them will fall ill. So because there are so many people contributing, there's always a pool of money that is large that on our own we cannot bear if we are asked to pay that. So if we take advantage of such schemes, it will help a lot when we have health needs in the family because it means that the health insurance can offset these schemes without us having to run health ask health or looking for who to borrow or cry for help. So it's available. Those working maybe with a government or private sector, it's a lot simpler for them because it's already provided as part of their work. But for those not working, it is available. Something as simple as Obio Cottage, I know they provide that. So you just contribute a certain small amount each month. If you have need, usually you find out that at the end of that your treatment, what the health insurance has paid has exceeded what you have even contributed. 
but they had that money because there are a lot of other people that are contributing that will never fall ill. At this, everybody cannot fall ill at the same time. So that's an important thing we also consider when we want to maintain uh, the health of our families. Then number three point we'll look at is healthy food choices. I know that is something that has been hacked on. We've talked about it over and over, but we cannot stop talking about food and health. That's the truth about it. Either what, what we eat will either make us well or will kill us. That's the truth about it. So no matter how much we talk about healthy food, we cannot overemphasize it. I know fathers may not be involved in the cooking, but there are most times that ones funding the cooking, and they have they that direct or indirect uh, parts in what is eaten in the family. So it's important. There are also mothers in the house. It's important we invest in the right food choices for our family. We tend to encourage that our food should be as natural as possible, avoiding too many processed things that are available now. Not only are these ones that are natural healthier, they are a lot cheaper compared to the ones that are processed. So another important thing is get plenty of water, drink plenty of water, cut down on fats, cut down on, on, on the artificial drinks. For, growing, for our growing children, there are still families that have a lot of growing children, it's important we invest in the right things that will make them stay healthy. So foods that are rich in proteins and all the nutrients that children need to grow, these are things that we have to be deliberate about. It's, not a, it's hardly about uh, money or resources. If in fact, most times it tends to be the richer you get, the more likely that you will be the one buying junk and spending your money wrongly on, on the wrong things to eat. So most times, healthy feeding is, has little or nothing to do with our resources. It's our, about our choices and the information that we have. So we encourage healthy food choices. In fact, it's said that between healthy food choices and regular exercise, those are the key things. Those, those are the single most important things that will determine how healthy we stay, both as individuals, as families. So that will take us to the number four points, which is uh, regular exercises. We cannot overemphasize staying at active also. I know that one time I was speaking with someone, the person was like, ah, the amount of stress we go through as Nigerians, is not enough exercise already. Do we still need to be exercising after living in Nigeria? I said, well, you still have to exercise. Exercise is a deliberate thing. No matter how much stress and exercise are not the same thing. So that you are sweating, you are under the sun, it doesn't translate to exercise. Uh, so we need to make our time to exercise. It's something that we have to be deliberate about. Usually in the families, the fathers and the mothers that will happen. Because they're the ones that need it most. Children naturally are active. In fact, once a child is quiet, you know that, ah, this one may be ill. So children usually will not focus on them in terms of exercise. But it's also important that we involve them. But fathers and mothers, more importantly, make our time for exercises. It doesn't have to be a very long, it doesn't have to be a gym, going to register in a gym. It, has, it can be within your room. No matter how small your living space is, everybody can exercise. Okay, it said that in a single day we're expected to take uh, 10,000 steps. So you can imagine that. Is this something that we can achieve by not being, you have to be a deliberate effort before you can cover all that. Not only are exercises important, they, help, they keep our hearts strong. There are so many benefits of exercises. Maintain our healthy hearts and then pro prevent so many things we're hearing happening now. So many strokes. So many, uh, uh, all manner of things happening, cardiac arrest, these are things that are proven in science that exercise can help to, help us to overcome. Then number five point, it's important to lose weight if necessary. Weight loss is not necessarily for everybody, uh, but each and every one of us should, should be able to calculate what we call our body mass index. You look at your height, look at your weight, and then if you divide your weight by your height in meter squared, you get your body mass index. Our aim is that everybody, nobody should be above 25. That's body mass index of 25. Once you're having anything above 25, the person is overweight. If it's getting to 30, the person is obese. Okay, so overweight and obesity have been proven to be linked to so many of the disease conditions we are seeing now. Diabetes, hypertension. And it's also important to mention, for families that still have young children, and even grandchildren, Children that are overweight or obese stand as much risk as adults. So there's nothing like baby fat or I want a chubby or I want a fat baby. There's no, no glory or no gain in that. So we also have to make sure that our children are staying within a healthy weight. It's also important if we want to prevent sickness and disease in the family, get adequate rest. That's a vital part we can't overlook. It's important to include rest as part of our routine. I know that there's so much uh, stress in the land, so much uh, hustling and all that just to meet up. But it has to be a deliberate effort. For civil servants and people working, that they have to give leave, it's easier for them. But for those that are self-employed, if you are not careful, you will see yourself working all year round, all year round. So it's a dangerous thing. You have to be deliberate and slow down and take a rest. Sometimes take a leave, even if it's one week, two weeks, even if you are self-employed. 
Because the truth is that if you are not taking enough rest, even if that, the day you will fall ill, you realize that that's your market or that's your business, and you're thinking that, ah, if you don't go, that something will happen. It will continue or it will slow down and wait. So it has to be a deliberate effort to get adequate rest, get enough night rest at least. For adults, we're expecting at least to get up to, eight to eight, six to eight hours of sleep. But the younger the child, the more the sleep required, eight to 10 for children or even more if they're smaller babies. So enough rest will help us to stay refreshed to tackle anything that comes up the next day. Then we also need to maintain good hygiene. Good hygiene is an important point, more so now. And I'm sure that we have so talked about hygiene in the past months with uh, COVID-19, but we cannot talk about it enough. It's unfortunate to say that there are, I still hear people that say they don't believe that there's something like COVID-19, that it's something that, uh, oh, the government wants to use and uh, it's money. The truth is that whether we want to believe or not, it is there. That we haven't seen anybody or that we don't know anybody directly that is affected doesn't mean it's not there. So I'll encourage us, we that are in the healthcare profession, I'm sure we have, at least we know people that are infected. We know those that have died, so many. Usually we'll say, oh, 60 and above. It's not only 60 and above. Even if you think you are young, please. Nobody knows. We have seen even the young and fit die from COVID-19. So nobody should even aim to be infected in the first place. So it's important we follow all the advisory that has been repeated over and over concerning COVID-19. Regular hand washing, wearing face masks, maintaining physical distancing, Avoid unnecessary going out. Any going out that you can do without for now, you can avoid it till whenever it passes. But unfortunately, it seems that COVID-19 is here for some time. It's not like it's about to go, out, go away anytime soon. So it's for us to fashion out how can we survive and live and even cope and thrive even in the midst of the COVID-19. So the only way forward is to make, to make sure that we are following all the advisories that have been harped on over and over. Apart from COVID-19, so many other diseases that people suffer, that we suffer, are things that hygiene can control. Especially for younger children, families that have younger children, common things, diarrhea, pneumonia, these are things that it's hygiene. Hand washing, paying attention to the water we are drinking. Most times we think it's only until we have drank pure water or drank bottled water before we know it's clean. No. Much of the things we even call pure water, are, if you see where they make them, you will, in fact, you, you will shudder. So it's even safer for you that you are fetching your tap or your borehole and boiling the water and drinking. So we have to pay attention to both the food that we eat and the water that we drink to maintain the, our right hygiene. Then it's also important that we get regular health checks and screens. The tendency is that we Nigerians, in fact, we only assume that hospital is only for those that have fallen sick. It's only until someone falls ill before they will remember hospital. But really, it shouldn't be so. Hospital should also be for preventive health, even before the illness arises. It's something that we'll take advantage of from time to time. Have a health check. The older we get, the more important it becomes. Usually for much younger, for children, usually schools or one thing or the other, that will make them to have a health check. But by the time we are getting to 30, 40, it's expected that we are having a health check annually at least. If you are up to 50, we say every six months. So these are the things that will help us to pick up some problems before they become too big to manage. So at these health checks, we expect that at least they are looking at our BP. It's, not, it's, 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 very, it's dangerous now for anybody to be walking about and not know whether they are hypertensive or not, or whether they are diabetic or not. It's a very terrible thing. That's why you can hear that somebody ah, woke up one day. In fact, two days ago, one of my colleagues, they just called him. The brother went to put on his gen and slumped, and that was it. And at the end, of what, was, what did the autopsy show? He had a, a stroke, a bleed in the brain. Although he was a non-hypertensive, but I, we know that at least the, each and every one of us have heard such stories of people that die suddenly like that. It's lack of health checks that will bring up such. So we should take advantage of um, having these regular health checks. And also in these health checks, there are routine screenings that we should also have. Apart from our BP and our blood sugar, it's important they are looking at screening for the cancers that are common. Because the thing about cancers is that the, the single most important thing that will determine who will survive, apart from God helping the person, is how early did the person find out? And how can someone find out early? Is the screening? Once it becomes something that, oh, I have to start showing a symptom or this or that, it, most times it's late. So it's usually those that who will pick it up just from routine screening that the ones that usually will come. Unfortunately, because adults, most times they have to pay for these vaccines, unlike children, where almost all the vaccines are free. So, but because we say that prevent, even that little alcohol may actually be beneficial for heart, heart health. But remember that when we say alcohol, usually the model alcohol is red wine, which many of us are not uh, able to afford. And there's usually a thin line between be drinking and then abusing the alcohol. So if you're not able to keep within that limit of one or two glasses of red wine a day, 
or I mean, just one drink of alcohol a day. It's safer to even keep up entirely. All right? Then the next thing is to avoid smoking and substance abuse. Smoking has no form of, unlike alcohol, where they say, oh, it's small. For smoking, there's absolutely no benefit. In fact, it's the most dangerous thing anybody can think of. So people that smoke, they are, if you, even if it means seeking medical help, seek. There are ways to help them stop. But for those who haven't taken up the habit, actually the young ones here, please don't even take it up. And remember that in the family, when people smoke, it's not only the person smoking that suffers. There are secondary smoke that others inhale. Children are there. Others that are not smoking are also inhaling the secondary smoke and suffer the same hazards that the person is going to suffer. Then the 12 points. Okay, something may not be in your own booklet, but I, I assure you, you hand over all your
about some few months ago, my son started coughing and kept coughing. We took him to uh, um, the health center. They gave him drug. He kept going. At some point, then we were using pure water. I don't know whether there's any water that can be recommended. I would say, I think this one is okay. Because then we were using uh, water. If, uh, Uniport, we use Uniport and some other water. Then we, at some point, we stopped. We started boiling water. So we were now boiling and drinking, both us and the children. But only about two months, I discovered that that cough just left. So, and for, the, for four months now or more, we are taking the uh, boiled water. I've not noticed that, so I don't know whether it's a coincidence or maybe that the, pure, the boiled water is better than either the bottled water or something. Thank you. Praise the Lord. My question is on the enough rest and exercise. Okay, I've worked for more than 40 years doing strenuous work and exercise. And now, you are talking about having another exercise and the rest again. How do you reconcile it? Because uh, I've been overworking myself and my body. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, praise the Lord. Let's try to take the answers to the questions. The two, the two questions on health insurance, I'll take them together. The truth is that the health insurance scheme, the national health insurance scheme, is something that is still evolving. So there's still plenty of room for improvement. I cannot say it's perfect for now, but I, civil servants and you that has used it, at least you can attest. For 15,000, you're getting health care all year round. Uh, most times, even if you're assuming you were paying for that health care yourself, one visit may have, you, may, you may even spend more than that 15,000. So health insurance, we cannot overemphasize that is important, but there are so many lapses, we agree, but there is, is a progressive process that is getting better and better every day. So we can only hope. In terms of the drugs, for now, because the health insurance scheme just specifies the drugs by their names, not by their brands. So if you say nifedipine, they will give you nifedipine. They will not say, they mustn't stick to any particular brand. But we know that within drugs, there are brands that are better. For example, common thing, okay, we say augmenting. There are several other drugs that are the same drug, but different name, different companies that may not be as potent. And that's why the prices will vary. So most times, the, the unfortunate thing is that the health insurance will always tend to go with the ones that are slightly cheaper, because that's what the money can cover. But most times, they also tend to work, get the results that we need. So by and large, health insurance has so many lapses, and um, there's still plenty of room for improvement. In terms of uptake, that's why I'm encouraging us. Several places, places like Lagos, the uptake is a lot wider, even in the rural communities. But places in Port Harcourt, it's only civil servants and people in the organized private sector that I can say that are benefiting. So let's try to, I would still advise that we still go for the health insurance because even though the lapses are there, but it's something that continuously improves and it's definitely better than paying out of pocket. Paying out of pocket can be, is, is something that nobody can cope with really. So the questions on water. We cannot categorically say that, oh, this is the best. Well, the essence of boiling water is just to purify the water. So there, there are so many other methods of purifying water for drinking. If you have, there are several filters, commercial filters that are available that also work very well. They can also provide you with very clean and clean water to drink. But what we don't encourage is spending money that you can use and do other things and feed children on pure water. If you go to where they make those pure waters, the water in your buta is even better. So that's why we may discourage you from pure, um, buying pure water and all that, except for maybe places that you know that are reliable, that you can trust the quality of what they do there. And there may be bottled water, there are brands, and there are other brands also. So, but by and large, boiling water, the essence is to kill germs, particularly to kill germs. Okay, so, fine and, and, and true. When you boil the water, the chemical composition may just change slightly, but usually it's not significant enough for us to start to worry whether the water is still good enough. No, absolutely not. So, boiling water is safe enough for making the water clean for drinking. So, that's that on the water questions. Then, um, Exercise and rest, sir. Okay. Well, you talked about having worked very hard, and now it's time to rest. <laughs> yes, sir. We agree that, yes, you worked hard, you will rest. But when we talk about exercise, like, we, remember we have said that you mustn't go and register in a gym. I said the recommendation usually is just moderate exercise, is anything that makes your heart beat faster. And we call them aerobic exercises that make you use more oxygen. So usually 20 to 40 minutes of it every day is enough. 
So we haven't said that you should maybe start lifting weights or anything you know, ex excessively stressful, no. So in as much as, okay, you will rest. And when we talk about rest for adults, usually we are referring to deliberately taking leave and say, oh, now I'm resting. I'm not worrying so much about work. Even if it is uh, one, one week in a year, two weeks in a year, it makes all the difference. And then nighttime rest also are important. Adults usually will require between six and eight hours of sleep in a night. So that's the rest. We haven't said that adults should not work during the day. They have to work during the day. But that's, that's the only way there'll be food on the table. So but as they're working during the day, exercise has to be a deliberate thing. You bring out maybe 20, 30 minutes. Or it doesn't have to be a one hour or two hour thing. Uh -huh. So the balance, I think, is clear. All right. Thank you. I don't know if there are any more questions. All right. Hallelujah. I think that will not be enough. Let's do more. We can do better than that. Please. I'm sure that uh, if we had paid for this uh, talk, I'm sure we would have appreciated uh, God the more. Uh, I, I want to say that uh, even though we may have heard all that she said before now, but it is like the word of God, which is new every morning. Because every day you hear it, you must hear something different. I'm sure we would have heard something different from all we have been hearing today. And uh, from the day we each, from the way we each to ask questions, it appears that uh, when we meet, we may be agreeing that uh, she will come again, not necessarily during this men's week, but on a separate day to ask her to give us some hours of uh, lectures where we may have all the time to ask questions. Be that as uh, it may, may I also call on uh, another of our brother, who is uh, one of the resource persons we have today, to give us talk on the uh, entrepreneur. He is uh, no other person than the uh, engineer Uzoma Mboko, as he's coming. I, I hope he's here. Let's uh, give him a round of applause. Welcome, sir. Men, men, in understanding, well, I want to thank the planning committee for the privilege I've been given to uh, make this talk this evening. Uh, I've been written to give a talk on fish and poultry farming and uh, I want to say that I trained as an engineer I trained as an engineer and I qualified as an engineer how come then that I've been asked to give talk on farming I want to just give a brief rundown of how I started how I veered not that anyway not that how I veered because I'm still an engineer I still practice engineering but how then am I also practicing farming? Well, it started uh, just like play like play before we left employment, government employment. Uh, we started by uh, my wife going to buy fish, cut fish. Had uh, a fish farm near us. So every time I want to eat fresh fish, cut fish, my wife will go to that farm to buy. And uh, we, had, we also have a neighbor that is into fish farming. So the boy came and said, uh, why are you going to buy that? Let us just get a GP tank, spoil one and cut it, that he will give us fish to, to train. We agreed we bought that tank, we cut it, and he gave us 110 catfish, what we call fingerlings. We are going to come to that. And before we know it, within a space of three months, we had well over 100 big catfish to eat. Tell me how we can finish 100 big catfish. So we ate and ate and ate. We dashed some, and uh, we continued eating fish. So immediately after that one, he said, okay, we, I, anyway, we saw the potential in it because the boy just finished university. He read industrial chemistry, I should think so. He never read engineering, agric engineering. Within seconds, that tilapia is dead. So these are two major fish farming that, uh, that people engage in, in 
and this part of the country. So we go out, I will go to uh, talk about what and what are required if you want to go into fish farming. What and what do I need? What and what must I do? What are required? The first and foremost thing, as in every other business, is space. In space, it doesn't need to be, it all depends on the, uh, the, the, the capacity of what you want to do, the level you want to go into. But the most important thing is space. But for country farming, you don't need to have a quarter plot of land is enough for you to start. I went looking for a broad uh, bruise stock to hard fish. I went to a woman's place. In fact, that thing is not more than half plot of land. He has his house. In fact, if you manage to drive the car, you have managed to enter. You cannot drive that car without bending it. Otherwise, the length of your car will not be touching the building. So, but by the side of it, the woman lined simple, simple ponds. Simple, simple ponds. I was so amazed. And the person that did everything and installed it, it was so fantastic. And the woman, that was, that is what she is doing. Every day, uh, madam, you get a uh, bruise talk, you say, come. You go there, the woman will not tell you price you begin to buy. So, the first and foremost thing you need is space. Then, the second thing that you will require is to get the pond. And in getting the pond, there are about uh, three types anyway people generally use. You can build a concrete pond. Use cement, some cast it, some just build it and plaster it. You can go for tarpaulin pond. These ones are collapsible. That is any day, say no one do it again. You collapse it and you go away. You can also go to Etim Pond. People dig ponds, particularly the people living near, near swamps and river Rhine. They go, they enter, they do it, and they do it, and it's uh, flourishing. That is pond. Is the second thing that you require. It's either the, 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 the concrete pond, you have uh, the tarpaulin pond, or you can go into uh, the etting pond, depending on where you have your space. Then the next thing that you have, must have is source of water, because fish requires water. So if you don't have source of water, you will have a problem. Because the what kind of water you are talking about, which you are going to be using to top up your fish, I mean to, to change the water from in the pond, particularly if you are using concrete and the and tarpaulin pond, is so much. It's not something of 2,000 liters. And you are living in somebody's house, you want to go into it, you are going to have a problem with that person. Because 2,000 liters, 4,000 liters, 6,000 liters can never be enough. So you must have your own borehole before you can be able to go into it. Then the fourth thing there is that you must have a source of discharging the water. Where you are going to discharge the water. Uh, it's not that you discharge the water in the company, no, because it's not just carry a bucket of water and pour away. Some people are fortunate. They are living very close to uh, very fine drainages, drainages that are flowing. I know for our sister, uh, sister Blessing God, they, they have their drainage is very close, so they can discharge their water and it runs inside uh, the drainage and the drainage flows, so you don't have any problem with a community there. In fact, where we are living, myself, Branobo, we, there is one man that has fish farm very close to us, and if he discharges water, it comes right around to where we are living. And in fact, it's even damaging the road where we are living now. So every day, the water he is discharging is coming back to the road. We have made problem with the man, we have gone to block the, the, the drainage with the community boys. They say the man will not do, the man, they ask him to also provide where he's going to be discharging the water, I know that, I don't know if he did it, but one way of doing that or solving that problem is you can dig a place where you discharge water uh, within your compound. These days are what we call uh, Indian well. Indian well, you dig it so deep, so whatever water that is coming out, instead of going out, goes into, into that uh, uh, into that well. If it's a place that is dry, no matter the volume of water there, it will go and it will dry. But for me, I have a farm, and that farm I just dug 20 by 14. That is where all the water goes. And it's also, I have an advantage. I can also stock fish in that, uh, uh, that way I discharge water, make, using it as an egg pond. 
So it's having double uh, uh, solutions, give me double solutions, discharging of water, and also I use it as an egg pond to train more fish. And uh, before you begin to, another thing anyway is to stock your fish, the pond. Before you stock the, the, the pond, you stock your fish in your pond, one basic thing you have to do is what we call the liming. The liming is that you treat that pond. After building the pond, you cannot just carry your fish and throw inside it. The chemical that comes from the cement will kill, that, kill your fish. So there is need for you to delime it. And one simple method to delime it is that pour water inside it, carry dry banana leaves, and put inside that pond, and allow it to stay for seven days, seven to uh, two weeks. The moment you go there, you see mosquito larvae swimming inside it. You know that something that is live can survive in that place. So, and the after which you wash it well with salt, so we use hypo to wash it very well before you can be able to put your fish in that place. So, how do we get the fish? How do we get the fish? Uh, let me just look at that, sorry. What? 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. <laughs> so how do we get the fish? It all depends on the level where you want to start. Some go into hatching, some go into grow out. For me, I am into hatching. I am also into growing out. So if you want to talk about hatching of fish, how you can be able to produce it, it is a bit technical, but we're going to just run it through so that for the benefit of people that, are, that may like to go into it, but it is better hands-on. If it is to grow it out, I give you fingerling, I give you post fingerling, I give you juvenile. You can throw it inside pond and you begin to feed it and it will grow. But if you are talking about actually getting the fish, it is better hands-on. You are there, somebody is demonstrating it. You mean the... No, 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 no. It is better that somebody is demonstrating it and you are saying it. But as in everything, you know, if you go to the river, the way the fish, they hatch, anyway, the way they, they produce, it's not the way they don't mate. The fish in the river, the ones from my biology, elementary biology, anyway, secondary school biology, they don't mate, the female lays the egg, the male just goes there and fertilizes it with the semen from the mouth and walks away. And you see the female will be there, will just be blowing it fan, you know, supplying oxygen to it. Before you know it, it is hard. But for us here, we do it at Fisher. If you want to go into fish farming, if you want to produce it, first of all, we have a female. And that female, you will know that this female has egg, the belly will swell. Then a feed that a female feed that has been up to one year and above is better for use. Anything beside that, the egg will be there, but it's not matured enough for use. Then you get the male. The male from anything eight months up to a year three months is okay. Because if it passes a year three months, it becomes sterile. So some of the time you want to go and source for your brewstock, what you call brewstock, the male and the female which are going to use. You ask the age of it because it's very important. If it is for the male, they tell you this one don't reach two years. Say it don't mature when alive. It has matured and it has passed the age of maturity. It has become sterile. So if you get the female before uh, the following, a day before the day you want to hatch, we inject it with a hormone. We inject a hormone to it, and before you inject, anyway, the method of injecting or the quantity to be injected is for every kg of fish you put 0.5 mils of the hormone. As I said, it's technical, but I want to just rush it. So if you inject the male, uh, the female, within a space of 10 hours, that is 10 hours if you want to hatch by 8 o'clock, which means by 9 this evening, you inject it. Or you know, if you want to hatch by 10 o'clock, which means by 12 this evening, you inject it. So by tomorrow, 10, 8 a.m. or 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. is ready the egg would have a kind of reducing labor. The egg would have matured. So the following day, you get the, the male, you kill the male, you bring out the sack, the, the male sack, and you tear it. After you have, uh, uh, after you have uh, uh, pressed out the egg from the female, then you put it on top, uh, you, uh, the, 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 you tear the male, the, 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 male, the male sack, 
bring out the, 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 the semen, what we call the mint, and spread it on top of it and mix it properly. Don't allow water to touch the meat because if water touches the meat, it has spoiled. So after which, you now add what we call normal saline, then you add water. The moment you add water, fertilization has started. And it is assumed that within 60 seconds, fertilization has started, we would have put the hatching. So but in your hatching, your hatchery, you had already prepared what you call camba. It's a net built on some uh, pipes. I don't want to, as I said, it's hands-on. So net bits on some pipe, so you spread the egg on that net and leave it. After about 30, 36 hours, you see the eggs dropping. Then you next day, you remove it, and that is it. Then you get what you call fry. Within about three, four days, you see them swimming up. Then you start to feed them. So that is just, I just rushed it because it has a better hands on. So I just rushed the method. So if you have any question or if you want, you can uh, consult us and we get you through. So after you have gotten the, that, that is if you want to go into hatching. But if you don't want to go into hatching, you can buy already produced fingerlings, the one that have, somebody has already produced. You can buy them as fingerling, you can buy them as post fingerling, it's more than fingerling. You can buy them as a juvenile, the one that is bigger than that. Then you store. Then you begin to feed them. And feeding is the next thing that is also very, very important in it. So feeding, at every stage, there are sizes of food you give to them. The time they are fingerlings, there are sizes of food you give. The time they begin to grow beyond that, there are sizes of it you give. And as they are progressing, the sizes of food you give is also increasing. And uh, as small, when they are small, the food that are produced with the eat are more in protein. So anytime you go look at this, and they tell you it's 45% protein, it's 50% protein, it's 55% protein that is the feed that you are buying. And as they are growing, the protein content will continue to increase because that time you are trying to give it weight if you want to sell because we sell in cages. So you go for food that are more in carbohydrates so that uh, they can add weight. So you can feed when they are small. You feed three times in a day. As they are growing, you can change to two times in a day. If they are becoming big, you can even change to once in a day. So if you do that within a space of three, four months, those little feed, you see them, they have become big, depending on how you feed them. So if you don't feed your fish well, they cannot do well. That is why I see some people, they go into it, they will buy fingerlings, they will say these fish, no, they grow, because they are not feeding them well. Then the next thing you must do to make sure that the fish grow well is that you must constantly change the water, change the water every time. You must constantly be changing that water. Because after a day, if you go there, you see that that water becomes dirty. And if you don't change it, the tendency, if I know the tendency, the thing is that the fish will be infected, and secondly, they will stop to eat food. And thirdly, ammonia will begin to build there, and ammonia that builds up in that pond is very, very injurious to the fish. So the water you must change, that was, that was why I said, you must have your own borehole. If you don't change water, in fact, water is the life of fish. If the water is not neat, your fish will not eat. If you don't change the water regularly, the ammonia will build up and the, the fish will be infected. And before you know it, you are running at a loss. Praise the Lord. And another thing you have to be doing is that as the fish keeps on growing, you do what we call sorting. You do what we call sorting. As they grow, you must separate the bigger ones because we are going to get into that later, uh, shortly. As they are growing, as they are growing, you will see the one that will grow bigger, faster. Even as we are hatching in the hatchery, before you know it, you are seeing the ones, other ones will be like ants. Whereas you are seeing ones that are big as, uh, as grasshopper. Some of them are eating the smaller ones to grow. And it is like that. Before, you know, we, call it, we call them uh, early shootouts. And those ones, we try to groom them, which we use for further hatching. So you must do your sorting from time to time. You must watch it. You must look at the ones that are growing bigger and faster. 
Because if you allow them there, they will begin to eat the smaller ones and be using those ones to grow. So another thing we are going to be looking at, what are the challenges in that? We have talked about the things we have to do, feeding, change of water, and sorting. These are the things we have to be doing. What are the challenges in uh, fish farming? You have your point. One big challenge that we have, and anyway, one of the challenges we have is cannibalism. Catfish, they can eat one another very, very seriously. So, but one of the things that cause the cannibalism is if you're not changing water. Dirty water can cause them to begin to feed on another one. If you're not feeding them properly, hungry man is an angry man. The uh, survival of the uh, fetus, the bigger ones and the stronger ones will begin to eat on uh, the ones that are weaker. So, you must, it's one of the challenges we face in fish farming. Another one is infection. As in everything, every living thing, you get infection or they get infected, they also die. They also die as a result of infection. So, but there are medicines that can be used once you begin to see the signs that you can use to cure them or medicines that can even use to prevent the infections. Another challenge we face is predators. There are predators that eat fish. We call them king fishers. There are birds that come to eat fish, especially when your pond is outside. So the solution to it is that at times we cover it with net. In fact, not at times. Once they are fingerlings, you cover the fish, the, the ponds with net so that the <laughs> that Amode has started building up is you begin to see foam on top of your on top of the on, on top of the, uh, the pond. It begins to foam. And once it begins to foam, ammonia has built up, oxygen has depleted. That is one other thing I just forgot to mention. Fish like clean water, they also like oxygen. At times there are farms that run water continuous 24 hours. The sense of it is to make sure that the pond is properly supplied with oxygen. As I said, the natural environment habitat, once the male fertilizes the egg and goes away, you will see the female there, if you are watched, will just be waving his uh, fin. It is blowing so that oxygen will go there. So that the, 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 the fingerlings or the ones at uh, the fries will be getting enough oxygen. So if another, uh, the challenge, as I said, is ammonia built up. And that ammonia buildup is as a result of yeah, overfeeding them, the food that are not uh, uh, flushed away, and things like that. And another thing is uh, algae buildup. That is the greenish thing up on the pond. It's algae. If you allow algae to build up to an extent, that is at times, if I last year I suffered it so much, I put fish before I know it, particularly during the dry season, during the sunny time. The algae will always build up in the extent that before you know it, the green thing will just cover your, the pond. If you throw fish, the, I mean feed, the feed will hang on top of the algae, and the, the fish will not be getting enough oxygen and they'll be dying. So, but we, try, we have tried to solve that problem. So that algae build up, we now try to use zinc to cover the pond so that even sun is coming, the algae is not building up to the extent that it is uh, affecting our fish. That are the challenges that we face. Some of the challenges, there are other ones that you face. You can fall into dubious uh, consultants in as you are building up the business. You can fall into serious uh, dubious consultants. You can also experience theft. My friend closed his farm as a result of theft. In fact, the person working for him, he will, uh, he will just uh, I go, he lives at, he lived, he was living at Dillon at that time. His uh, farm was at uh, Rumibo, was at Rumibo. So every evening before he comes, there is some of the time you cannot quantify it. They, and those trust people around, people will always come, oh boy, do business now. So they were uh, stealing his uh, fish. So these are all challenges we can face in fish family. So another thing is market and marketing. Is there market, are, do we have market for the business? I can. that there is market, there is no quantity you produce. 
you don't see people buying them. No quantity. In fact, last year or two years ago, there was this massive purchase of fish by these abokis. No matter the quantity you produce, and not they will produce and they will pay cash. So the market is there every time. Nothing you produce, no matter the quantity you produce, that you will not see some people that will buy. And if you're talking about marketing, you can also develop your own strategy of how you can market your fish. So another thing we are going to talk about, whether the business is viable. There is no business venture, if you do it well, that is not viable. It's a viable business, depending on how you do it. It all depends on your patience. It all depends on your endurance. It all depends on you trying to gain experience here and there in order to make it uh, work. Then I want to just give a general advice. I want to give a general advice. And that general advice is uh, if you want to start a fish business or any business whatsoever, my general advice is that one, if you want to thousand, I, had, I have a friend, we are my colleague in the office, we all retired at the same time. He went and started with a capacity of 100,000. He bought a farm near Omogwadea and is the 18 point star. That's a swamp after that, as if you are going to Siobo. He went and bought 14 plus of land, he cleared it, he built 18 ponds, and uh, as I said, dubious consultants, the person that sold fish to him, say, oh God, stock 100,000. He went and stocked 100,000 at the time. A time I called him, he said, okay, come and see my farm. I went there, when I looked at the environment, in fact, he has even called banks. That day, the bank came, he wanted to collect loan for the farm. When I look at the environment, open place, and for you to feed 100,000, if they begin to go, grow, 30 bags a day will not be enough if you want to feed them well. And 30, 000, uh, 30 bags, if it is now multiplied by 5,000 plus, you can now begin to see the amount. So, but eventually, when next I saw him, oh boy, what happened? He said, oh boy, do you know that I lost more than 7 million in that business? Because he went in full. So, it's better you start gradually and you can grow from it. And I've, I've read I've tried to look around. There is no hard and fast rule about all these things, particularly fish farming. If you look at the platform, if any person throws a question, you will see 1,001 answers to a single question, which means no person has a particular solution. Every person is talking about his experience. They are good. They are good. So start small, and you grow with it, and you add your experience to it. And uh, Another advice I want to give is that is to look at the value chain of the farming, fish farming. To grow fish, to sell fish, to, to eat fish. That is not the only business that is involved in fish farming. You may decide not to even go into fish farming itself. There are people that are selling feed. I know they are not into fish farming. But I know people that sell feed, fish feed, that are in so fish farming, they're also making a hell of gain. If you go to that, in fact, there is one near the judge here. The man here, is it radiation or whatever? Just beside Fidelity Bank, there is one man that sells feed there. He also produces fish. You go there, you see people buying fish. He's selling the feed also. And fish does not end in just fresh fish. Some people smoke it. We are talking about the value chain. Some people smoke and sell, and they also it's make this big money. Also see people that also sell the fish oil. It's one of the value chains. Fish oil is so expensive. My neighbor I told you of, they had an oven that was getting him fish. If he, if he smokes, the fish oil that was coming, five liter fish oil, 20,000 naira. Then, So it has big nutritional value. If you go to where they are, around that River Niger area, Kayenji, where they produce fish in trucks, you will see people carrying liters, 20 liters, 30 liters, to go and buy fish oil. Just fish oil, that's what they are trading on. So, which also is a huge amount of money. And then, finally, I want to advise that uh, it is time for us to go into, uh, go back to the la to land and back to water. Uh, the president of African Development Bank said that uh, in 10 years' time, by the year 2030, 
that the agribusiness will be a one trillion dollar business in Africa. One trillion dollar, if you begin to calculate what one trillion dollar is, you can see that it is a huge sum of money. So it doesn't matter whether you are working, you can still go into it, go into anything farming. One trillion dollar is not a small money. And you can start now in 10 years' time, it's starting building up. People that are in rice business, they have started reaping it. People that are in fish business are reaping it. People that are doing poultry, I will not have time to talk about poultry. They are also reaping it gradually, gradually. By year 2030, people will be talking about, in Africa, $1 trillion business. Why not you position yourself and be part of that $1 trillion? It's an expert forecast, and I know that the man that did it is a Nigerian, Dr. Deshino. He wrote, and I read, and I am now beginning to experience it, and we are heading towards that. So people are into crop, people are into uh, poultry, people are in fish, particularly, I want to just give you a little story before I conclude. My, in front of our family house in the village, that's one judge. It's a judge in Abia State, from the Wachuku family. The man bought a land just in front of our compound, family compound. What, not more than four plus of land. He has built his own house there. But every day you pass there, I'm talking about the crop the man is doing and other things. Every day, if I, any time I go, I say, ah, oh boy, it's either he's doing no-go, it's either he's doing pepe, it's either he's doing cucumber, it's either he has a boho, he has these water sprayers. So off-season farming, he is doing it. I tell my father, look, oh, this man is making a hell of money there. But there are some people every morning, they will go and drink tombo, and they will get intoxicated, and they are looking at the man there, making one or two, making money, not even one or two. Because as he's producing, the people are coming, they are buying. Pepe, ordinary pepe. People are coming, they are buying. So my final advice is that the $1 trillion is for you, is for me. And I want to believe that I will tap into that $1 trillion. Then finally, my friend, say, Abuja, they do budget every year, billion upon billion. Why must he be working as a civil servant? He was positioned to be the general manager of Kano Rural Electrification Company. In those days, we are in Nepal. So that's, we are friends. So every day the man will come because Kwan Kwaso also engaged in massive rural electrification. So when we are close, he was coming to us. You cannot commission anything without Nepal that those days. So eventually the man said he cannot continue doing this. He had to resign. Eventually, uh, that he want to go to Abuja and be part of billion upon billion budget they are making in Abuja. And I want to let you know that he really tapped into that billion upon billion because he ended up being the president of Nigeria Society of Engineers. He's also a member of whatever the, the, the association's uh, board in West Africa now. So it's as a result of his saying, I want to go and tap the billion of billion. So it's my prayer that all of us will go back to land. Thank you for listening. May God bless us in Jesus' name. So questions? Do you have any questions? questions? Thank you, sir, Engineer Mbuko. Mm. Uh, we have listened to the interesting question, especially to those of us who are retired. Yes, sir. We want to follow your steps. Mm. One thing I did not hear from you is capital. Okay. When you were mentioning, you mentioned land, you mentioned the uh, okay. product you used mm. to develop, but you never told us how we can raise capital. Mm. Whether borrowed, whether there's a, uh, what do you call them, all these uh, social people that can give us money to start. Mm. I think that is one of the most important okay. things mm. in business. Okay. So how do we acquire our capital? Thank you. Thank you very much. Let me join others to thank you for such a, mm. a detailed lecture. Mm. Uh, the, I just have a small question. We talk about uh, 
removing water from the, the pond. Uh, pond and then taking it to the eating uh, uh, pond or yeah. somewhere. Okay. You can make a... Now you are saying you could also uh, stock that one. You can put fish there. What, what may, what, do you do anything to it to make it the fish habit it even with the dirty water you have been standing there? Uh, the, in fact, the dirty water is not, it's not too bad because it's, all, it's seen it as a natural habit anyway. Okay, okay let me just... Let me, okay. You know, thank you so much for the lecture. I want to just say that uh, some time ago, I remember telling you that I'm solidly behind you in this business. Okay. And uh, because of that, I had had to pay money to have a lecture on this uh, catfish farming. Mm. Uh, we have read so many uh, literature, but uh, I can tell you that uh, the man who has a particular uh, experience, you know, is the, in a better position to give it to you the way it should be. Mm. I know that you, I will come to you as a, a consultant very soon. You know well, sure. <laughs> uh, I, my major concern is, uh, despite all we have read and heard, we have a major constraint about the feeding of catfish. Mm. There are so many mixes and uh, uh, mixtures of uh, feeding for catfish. They're expensive, the feed, especially the foreign ones. My question is, that aspect that you spend so much money, your income, your capital, before you start selling after three, four months or six months, how do you try to see a way to reduce the cost of feeding? Because I know we have had, you can always come up with your own mix. This area, I would want to hear from you how you've been coping in terms of feed. Thank you. Uh, brother, good evening. To bring out exactly what I wanted to ask. Set up structures on that before we entered into COVID-19. I've done the pot, about three. I've done the starter, the startup area, then the finishing points, but I know it used to be bigger. Then I've done the poultry, double decks. For the, the feeding aspects, is there any other natural way or simpler way? Because if you go out there, there seems to be a lot of chemical mixtures. There seems to be a lot of the prices are outrageous. Is there any way we can get some other raw materials from anywhere we can scout from them that may be cheaper for us to achieve our aim and cut down costs. That's exactly what I wanted to get from you. Uh, I want to start with the capital. Uh, any business requires serious capital. Catfish requires capital. That is why I said you don't start big. I told you of my friend that started with 100,000. So if you don't have money, you cannot feed 100,000 catfish when they start growing. So you must put money, you start small, the way your money can be able to manage. But not just, there must be a minimum which you have, depending on what you have at hand. Talking about sourcing of fund, yes, there are ways, in fact, government, I read and I see, some people are into uh, cooperative, some people are into cooperative. I'm not, I don't belong to one yet, but I know that I've met one place I went to buy fish. They said they're having a meeting, one hotel at a bar road. So they are into cooperative, and that's a body. They are assessing this government fund. They say government have put, put down 50 billion naira for farmers to go and assess. And I'm sure the rice farmers are assessing it. The other people that are in crop are assessing it. I'm also sure that some of the feed farmers and poultry farmers in the country, they're also assessing that fund. So put, you must have a reasonable fund available because it is not good you start, as I said, fish requires feeding properly. If you don't feed your fish for two days, they will lose growth for one week. That is for sure. You don't feed two days. You say, I don't get money to feed them. You don't feed them for two days. The growth they will get, you have lost two, uh, a week out of the growth they will get. At times, if you don't feed them for a, a certain number of days, 
they will get stunted. No matter how they feed you feed, they will not grow beyond a certain level again. So the capital is there. I put capital available. There is also capital the government is encouraging people. I read and also hear people saying it, where you can assess such capital. Then the other thing is that what happens to water if you discharge them and put your fish there? Well, you just dig it. You can also delime it. The limit is so people put, put ash inside the bag and throw it into that pond. So there is no special delimit in it, but I've done one before and fish survived there and it is still the one I have in the farm. The one I have in the farm. So the dirty water that is going there, the natural grass that is going there, is also filtering the water. It's making it pure and clean. So the ammonia does not necessarily grow up in that place because whatever dirt that goes there, because what causes ammonia grow up is feed that the fish are not eating. Before you know it, in the earth pond, you see they begin to decay. At times you go near, you see the pond is smelling. You know that it is very dangerous. You must be sure that that water is removed and changed. Then feeding, as our brothers have just mentioned, is very, very critical. The feed, they are very, very expensive, and we are talking about how to reduce the cost. Some people have gone into producing their feed themselves. And uh, if you, there are feed that you throw and you give fish, it will sink and they will go there and pick it. But there are ones you, you should pick that, they will, that will float so that they can pick them up there. So fish feed, there are uh, uh, fish feed materials that are around. You get the, 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 the crayfish or whatever thing, you get, in fact, you go, you meal, then you come, you uh, get, get a pelleting machine and you pellet them. So some of the time, anyway, is that I've also had a discussion with some people I consulted. They said that they were talking about, as I said, I'm not an agri man, I'm, I didn't read agri engineering, uh, I didn't read agriculture in school. So he said that at times, the rate of conversion, you give them food, they will eat, but they are not growing because they are not converting the food they are eating to useful then. So that is why some people who produce feed, they say they are giving them feed, they are not growing. Some people will even say because they want to reduce cost, they will say they are getting indomie and throwing. Indomie, you give them, they will chop, they will not grow. Some people say they are even throwing purple, they will eat. Uh, you throw purple, you throw bread, they will eat. Of all those things they have thrown, how do they convert them to make them grow? But what I say, I want to say is that uh, there are local feeds that are very good. You have a uh, blue crown, it's very good. You have top that is also very good. That also foreign feed. You have coupon that is the best now in the market. You have Ziegler that is also good. You have, uh, uh, you have Prime that is also good. So what I do normally is that at a certain stage, when they are very, very small, at that time they are in the hatchery, I try to give them best quality of food. And that time they're not even eating much. They're not eating much. If I buy small feed, in fact, that time you can even use, if you are producing fish of say 20,000, 30,000, as it will turn out to be, you may not use more than 3,000 naira to feed them until they come out from the hatchery, the quantity of feed they are going to use. So when they come out from the hatchery, I train them again to a certain level. Then I begin to buy costly feed and I mix it with the one that is not too costly. I combine coupon with, uh, uh, with prime. If coupon is 9,000 naira per bag for 5 kg, prime is about 6,000 6, naira per bag. If you, you know, they get the average, you see you have reduced cost there. But if you get to a stage, that time I'm feeding them two times, three times. But if you get to a stage, I will just go to local feed, blue crown, and feeding it with the fish.
Thank you very much. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm sure that uh, anyone who came here today would be able to go home and say, indeed, I was able to get something. Uh, I don't think that, uh, I doubt if a consultant will do more than he has done. I think at the level he has performed, I think he stands to be an expert. I got my right. <coughs> I think he's an expert. So at this point, I will be calling on uh, the chairman of uh, this planning committee and the person of Ineme Awaji. Ineme Awaji, too. Okay, it's our side. <coughs> uh, he, he ought to come and give uh, a vote of thanks to these uh, two speakers. I think why he is yet to come, at, why he is yet to come, okay, uh, in his absence, Okay, uh, sir, in his after, please, can you come and give a vote of thanks to these are two speakers? Yes, sir, you, sir. Men, you know, understand? Okay, I stand on behalf of the CMF to thank the men to thank one of our brothers that have given us lecture on fish farming and how to grow the fish and make it profitable. And also thank the lady, Dr. Uju, that have given us the health instruction, how to manage our health and become healthy and our family also become healthy. I thank them and God will bless them in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Uh, it is offering time. You want to add your voice? It's offering time. Offering time. Please, uh, let Rajan, please come and continue what you started. Praise the Lord. Let's offer unto the Lord as we rise up and as I sing, we we'll go, we we'll come and put our offering. Amen. Give, it shall be given unto you. Good measure, shaking together and running over, running over. Give, it shall be given unto you. Good measure, shaking together and running over, running over. Oh yes, it shall be given unto you. Good measure, shaking together and running over, running over. Oh yes, it shall be given unto you. Good measure, shaking together. And running over, running over, give, it shall be given unto you. Good measure, shaking together, and running over, running over, it shall be given unto you. Good measure, shaking together, and running over, running over, give, give. It shall be given unto you, good measure, shaking together and running over. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us bless this offering in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the hands that I've given. We ask that you continue to bless them. And even this offering may be used to your glory and to your honor in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Men, 
in understanding, I must confess that uh, the both lectures we had this evening are good enough to be sampled and showcased anywhere around the globe. On that note, I want you to just, within a few seconds, give them a round of applause. Well, job well done. Today is the second day of the program. And as a matter of fact, I can say that some group are actually doing better. They're doing better in the sense that they're actually reaching out to their members. And of course, we have said it all, that if your members are not here, when the attendance will be taken, you'll be disadvantaged. So please ensure that you reach out to those who are not here so that they will join us by tomorrow. They will join us by tomorrow, and then your group will not be disadvantaged. Let's be here on time. I can see that those who were here on time had a better number when the attendance was taken. And at the end, if by the time you minus the first attendance and the second attendance, you know that you will be disadvantaged. So please, those of you who are already much and plenty in your group who attend um, in, your, in their numbers, which by reason of not coming on time. So try to be here quite on time. Tomorrow, the program starts officially by five, Bible study. But we are introducing something on Saturday. But before then, uh, let me inform us that tomorrow also, we are also asking that men should dress in their parish uniform. Men should dress in their parish uniform. For those of you who, whose um, parish uniform is not available or not good enough, but I'm not sure it shouldn't be good enough because we've not been wearing it for any occasion apart from coming to church. But if yours is not good enough, you can wear something else. But if yours is good enough and is manageable, means as you go back home, not centenary, the parish men's uniform. Many people don't have it. Sorry, I know that some of us have. Can I see the hands of those who don't have? That you don't have, you don't have, you've never had it before. One, two, three, four, five, six, only six. That's insignificant now. The rest who have, please wear. Those who don't have, you can wear another thing, no problem. By the time, at the end of this exercise, we might think of coming up with a new um, parish uniform so that everybody will now have. It will now be all inclusive. So please, tomorrow, let's showcase it. Go back and iron it properly so that um, we'll do showcase to the women that not only the women have parish uniform, we too, we do have parish uniform. Thanks to them anyway. Praise the Lord. Men, on Saturday, it's AGM. The AGM starts by five. But that's something we, are, we want to try to do, even though in the last Congress, the decision we took varies. But after considering a few things, we felt as a committee and with further consultation that it's important that we... And that has to do with the sporting activity. I am sure you know that yesterday we inaugurated one of the best table tennis in Nigeria, one of the best. If you go out, if you've never seen, just stroll and check under the, the parking garage, you will find one of the best table tennis. It's now fully owned by us. For this week, it is owned by men. After this week, the church takes over. And that was graciously donated to us by our father in the Lord, Sir Levi Mwabuku. Once again, I want us to appreciate him for redeeming that pledge. Daddy, we thank you very much. God bless you. You have always been redeeming your pledges. I will not forget the fact that uh, the first year when I was made the chairman of the planning committee for end of year, you made a promise of six or seven steps cake <laughs> to the church, and it did not fail. 100,000 naira was for that purpose, and you redeemed it quite on time. 
We bless God on your behalf and we pray that the Lord will continue to nourish and fulfill all your desires in this life in the name of Jesus. So, as a result of this new development, we are asking that we will spare ourselves just one hour between four to five to be here to do a little exercise with what has just been donated to us. We did a test run this evening. Those of you who were here quite early, we had a test run of it. And that test run has shown to us that we can actually manage it. I am sure you saw the sanitizer there. That for those of you who might feel, might feel that um, washing hand will not be enough, but you, all, you would like to sanitize your hand, we we'll provide you with the sanitizer. You sanitize your hand before handling the bath or exchanging the ball, as the case may be. And we're also coming with other, other um, sporting activity like um, drafts and ludo, if need be, um, words or whatever you call it. Um, the instruction remains that you will put on your face mask. So especially for those of you who will be playing the draft, if you want to engage yourself in that, you will wear your face mask completely. The sanitizer, the washing hand bucket is there. You will take care of that and everything will be done with strict compliance to COVID-19 protocol. Man, on that note, just for the sake of the table tennis and a few other things, we had approached the youth just to give you some form of um, energizer. Since we did not write officially to others the way we used to do, writing to other churches to come and play with us. But at this time, let's use what we have. So we have approached the youth to provide us some of their talented youths who can actually challenge some of our best. With what I saw this evening, I know that we have the best of the, what are those names in uh, table tennis that you know about? <laughs> the Rafa Nadals. We, we have them here. So please, the youth will be challenging us tomorrow in some of those uh, activities. Make yourself available 4 p.m. on the dot. By 5, we start the next program. As you do that, the Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus. On that note, let me call on. Men, in understanding, I think we are gradually coming to the end of uh, today's program. Uh, at that point, may I call upon our vicar, uh, who will come and... Oh, sorry, okay, sorry. Attendance, that's roll call, secretary. Thank you, Bishop. In understanding... Yesterday, at opening, we started with 20 members, 20 men in this auditorium, and at, at the close, we have 37 men. And uh, group, St. John's group, we have 12 members in all, Abraham 7, Paul's group 11, Matthew 12, David 7, and uh, Joseph 8. Closing attendance. John's group. John's group, one, two, three, four, five, six, six. Abraham, one, two, three, four, five, six, six. Paul's group. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wow. <laughs> Matthew. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. David. David group. One, two, three, four. Five. Joseph group. One, two, three, four, five. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Please, can we stand to our feet as we take our final prayers? As we plan to go, we are not leaving the presence of the Lord. The Bible says His presence will go with us. And at this point, I know that, like I said on the platform, that the presence of the Lord is becoming more and more visible to us. And in this meeting, I'm sure that what we are seeing now is evident. So I want to just close your eye in a minute and talk to God. Say, Father, as I live here, I'm not leaving your presence with me. Take me home successfully. Family, to every corner of this earth that I will go to from this day forward, let your spirit and your grace abide with me. Keep me and sustain me. The Lord, at the end, I will have cause to glorify your holy name. More visible to me from this day forward. At every point in time, O oh Lord, when I call upon your name in accordance to your word, you will answer me. I want to talk to heaven at this Gracious Father, we thank you because there is none like you. We give you praise, honor, and adoration. We magnify your holy name. We adore you. We ask eternal rock of ages. As we depart, we are not departing now from your presence. We are asking that your presence, that you have promised us from the days of old and even now, go with us, abide with us, keep us, sustain us, and preserve us all through the days of our lives in the name of Jesus. Be thou exalted, be thou glorified. Tomorrow, Lord, we will come here again to continue with you. We ask Holy Spirit that you will sustain each and every one of us. Lord, is there anyone that is sick in his bone, Lord, in the cells, every part of his body, we ask that you come and rejuvenate the souls, O oh God, of these ones here. We ask Holy Spirit, are there men who are not here for one reason or the other? We pray tomorrow you will encourage them by your spirit to be here to celebrate you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because there is none like you. Be thou exalted and be thou glorified. And Lord, we thank you even for those that you have used, resource persons you've used to bless us tonight. We ask as they go home, grant them more wisdom, grant them more strength, Grant them more open doors in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father, for this Lord and many more. We ask in the mighty name of Jesus. The grace. The love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Shalom. Good night. God bless you all. See you tomorrow and see you on time.